it's time that time of the program when we talk sports and uh Aaron Akarajala is standing by. I know Fredrick was talking about Fulham defeating Leicester right at their backyard. Aaron, tell us more. Yes, yeah, certainly Fulham Welcome actually back. stunning Leicester City and stopping them, not just stunning them, stopping them from actually becoming table toppers in the English Premier League. Unfortunate for them, the Foxes once again could not live up to the high the high standards they had actually had starting the season. So unfortunately for them, they had to settle for another loss. Ben Rodgers will be ruining chances, very missed in the game. But for Fulham, they've actually climbed out of the relegation zone. But now, on that, um, for those um, pictures on our screen, um, UEFA has actually released the team of the year. And we've got major nominees coming in with Angel Di Maria, Jao Felix, Sergio Gnabry, Erin Holland, then we know them. Robert Lewandowski, one of the favorites. Romelu Lukaku, Sadio Mane, Kylian Mbappe, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, and not forgetting the likes of Mohamed Salah and Ryan Sterling. Those are for the attackers of the year. Meanwhile, for um, the midfielders of the year, we have some very key names there in the midfielders of the year. The likes of um, um, Kevin De Bruyne, also not forgetting the likes of uh, Eva Bonega. Very key. Very key there, then Nicolo Barella, um, Kingsley Coleman, Kai Havertz. And so we see all those players and we are hoping to see some of the best. Thiago Alcantara, who, was, who played for Bayern Munich last season, but right now is with Liverpool. I'm sure he will be hoping to be crowned um, or make it into the team of the year. For Defenders of the Year, there's a, quite a lot of um, massive names. David Alaba, Angelino, Bernard, Alfonso Davis, who shone like a middle stars for Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich dominating this particular list. I must remember they won the UEFA Champions League. So certainly, they are actually in line to have a clean sweep, almost a clean sweep, Virgil van Dijk. Then goalkeepers, they've been, it's been narrowed out to some very select few. Yard All Black Man, Anoya, Keller Nevers, and not leaving out the likes of Anthony Lopez and Alison Becker. Now quickly, uh, we, since we're talking about football, matches will be played in the UEFA Champions League tonight. A lot is expected. And more importantly, we're having some titanic clashes go down today. Uh, the biggest of them will be the Game from Group A, where Atletico de Madrid at the Wanda Metropolitano plays Bayern Munich. Everyone will be looking at that particular one. And the big game from Group D, where Liverpool will be taking on Ajax Amsterdam. Liverpool were hoping to coast to top of the table, but that loss to Atalanta in match day four has actually dented their armor at the moment. And they know that they need to get a win against the Amsterdam team, because if Atalanta beats uh, FC Midtjylland, then Liverpool will find themselves in a very precarious state. Also, FC Porto will be going against Manchester City. Manchester City yet to lose this season in the year for Champions League. Another very keen tie will be the Macho Blaback against Inter Milan and Shakhtar Donetsk against Real Madrid from Group B. Since we're running it, um, quickly let me just talk about a female referee tonight will be hosting a game. All right, we are having the um, Juventus game. I beg because Juventus will be playing, and a female referee will be hosting that particular one and officiating tomorrow's game where Juventus will be playing. And she will be the first female referee to actually officiate a UEFA Champions League game. Her name is Stephanie Frappert, and we are hoping. She actually lives up to the billing. She's been a powerhouse in terms of refereeing. This is not the first time she's actually having a big job. She actually refed the UEFA competition against Liverpool and Chelsea in the Super Cup. She also was the referee in charge of the World Cup Finals in 2019, the Women World Cup Finals in 2019, where she actually where they, she refed the game between the United States and Holland, and she's even refed in the French Ligue 1. So her stock keeps rising. We're wishing her all the best where, tomorrow, and let's see what happens <laughs> if she can actually hold her own against the big boys. A no-nonsense woman, I must say. I think yes, I've watched no her before. <laughs> Quite interesting. You yeah. can see her commanding. Yeah, I love it when yeah. women shine on the yeah. big stage. Yeah. Is, that, is that all you have for us on sports, Aaron? And, of course, um, the news that is coming in that seems to be a downer, talking about Lewis Hamilton, that we'll be missing from the Bahrain Grand Prix. He was hoping to add to his already huge array of records broken this season. Um, that is 
the number of wings for a single season that has been cut short because he will be missing that particular Grand Prix after testing positive he said he woke up with mild symptoms and after test being done they found out that he is positive for COVID-19 and he will be missing that one so maybe an opportunity for his team at Valtteri Bottas who has played second field all season or would I say all through the time he, uh, he's joined Mercedes he might just have an opportunity to win one and take one under his belt Mm, we can only wish uh, him a speedy recovery yeah, out of yeah. that so he can get back into the game. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good that he's just mild symptoms. We hope that he doesn't develop more than that. And then the fact that the, the, the video uh, you showed, you know, I, I, I'm learning the Formula One that somebody has replaced that guy and he's in hospital. Oh, my. I didn't get that. The video you showed, I think it was yesterday, about yeah. the burning car. Yeah. The burning. Somebody has, in his team has replaced him to run in his place while he is in the hospital or something. Yes, yes. Oh, because um, what happened, okay, we, we spoke about that yesterday. And mm -hmm. what usually happens is they always re um, reserve drivers in every single Formula One team. So without a doubt, they would always want to field two drivers. Every, um, every team always has two drivers. And they won't want to, because they are always reserve drivers that actually help the main drivers. So it's just only natural that since he cannot make it, he will have to be replaced. But we're wishing him speedy recovery. I think he's actually recovering very well. Yeah. If you'd ask me, he should just call it quit for the season, try to recuperate properly and begin next season. Because already, the season is already won. Yeah. Both constructors, titles, and both individual titles have actually been won by Mercedes and Lewis with Hamilton so they just rest and try to recuperate for next season but we're still looking forward to a massive Grand Prix in Bahrain although there might be a little caution after what was a freak accident the last time out all right we will leave it there now Aaron Akerzela thank you so much for your interesting sports stories